let's talk about custom classes. Unreal is a big place. Where do your custom classes go? What do they descend from? What kind of logic do they have? What are their responsibilities? This can be very daunting, especially if you're not a coder. You came to Unreal because you heard that you could do everything in blueprints. You don't want to program in C++. I don't want to program in C++ and I'm capable of it. I held off for five years coming to Unreal because I thought I'd have to program in C++. But even if you're not programming, even if you're using entirely blueprints, you still have to understand what a class is, and you're going to be creating your own custom classes all the time, because every blueprint is a class. Unreal is literally just made out of hundreds of classes that talk to each other. So in order to understand how Unreal works, you're going to have to know what the classes are and what they do. There is a trick to it. It's not as daunting as it sounds because every class exists to make your life easier. So if a class is making your life harder, you're either using the wrong class or you're using the class wrong. It can be challenging to figure out how a class is supposed to be used, how it makes your life easier. But it can be very rewarding when you actually figure it out and realize that the things you thought were hard are actually trivial. True of your own classes, too. You make your own classes because you want to make part of your life easier. There's some kind of custom logic for your game that doesn't exist in, you know, Unreal as a whole, and that's always going to be true, even if it's just something like how you level up or whatever. And you create a custom class to make your life easier because you don't want to do this the long way, the fragile way, the annoying way every single time. For newbies or hobbyists, people who aren't necessarily coders, Coming into a class-based system like this can be very confusing and extremely challenging, and they're trying to get along by looking up tutorials, and the tutorials are teaching them the wrong things using the wrong classes because they're for a different thing entirely. It's really important that everybody understands how to think about classes, both your own and the ones that already exist in the game engine. So I thought I would take you on a little teeny tour of one tiny little corner of Unreal to show you how to think about classes. They exist to make your life easier, so you need to think of them in those terms. If you've been using Unreal for a while, there's not going to be anything in here that surprises you, but for the rest of you, welcome to a scene with some people in it. These people all have custom animations, they respond to the player, and they talk. Putting aside the quality of the animations, this is a pretty basic setup. It's one of the setups that doesn't get too much attention. Unreal really isn't built to do this kind of walking sim thing. So uh, you know, it's hard to look up tutorials on it, and I was struggling to figure out how to make my life easier. Now I'm doing what's called a montage based approach. You can go back to an earlier video in my series, I'll explain it back there. But essentially it means that I am passing custom animations to every single one of these characters. Now there is a class responsible, a base class, responsible for animating all of these characters. It's called an animation blueprint. And if you look up tutorials on animation blueprints, you'll find that they usually contain actual animations. Like, here is your walk animation, play it when this happens. Here is your duck animation, play it when this happens. But me, I'm just passing in a montage. A montage is just a pack of animations. And I'm saying, here, play these. The animation blueprint doesn't have any animations in it. All I needed was an animation blueprint that would play the montage and then also sometimes look at the player because all of these characters have a, a setup where they will turn to look at you if you get close, see? So that's why my animation blueprint. I just need something that plays montages as it's told and sometimes looks at the player. And I could create that. Creating that animation blueprint was pretty easy. I looked up a tutorial on how to get people to look at you, and I looked up a tutorial on how to get montages to play, and then I put them back to back, and they work fine. But animation blueprints themselves have some weird rules. And if you run into these rules, you may search for how to get around them and find yourself in crash-fested, nasty waters. In this case, the big problem is that the animation blueprints are bound to a specific skeleton. 
So if your characters have different skeletons, they have to have different animation blueprints. And I mean, my characters are all different sizes, right? Can these two characters really have the same skeleton? They're radically different sizes. Well, it turns out that Unreal... <laughs> Uh, yeah, their skeletons aren't skeletons. For reasons unknown to basically everybody on the planet, Unreal has chosen to use the word skeleton to mean something different from every other piece of software on the planet. And this is not something that is obvious if you're trying to look up how to use animation blueprints. In Unreal, a skeleton is just a list of names. In Blender, a skeleton is, here's where that bone goes, and here's where that bone is pointed. But in Unreal, it's just, here's the name of that bone. Because Unreal uses a skeleton to map animations to bones using those names as anchors. They have a couple of other uses and a couple of other things stored on them, but they don't store where the bones are, or what scale they are, or how they're rotated. Which means that... If you have a character that's the same basic fundamental shape as another character, they have the same skeleton. All of these characters have the same skeleton because they all have two arms, two legs, and a head. I could have much more exaggerated characters and they would have the same skeleton. I could have a 50 foot tall guy that's two inches wide and he would have the same skeleton as long as he'd got the same arms and legs. You just have to have the same bone names in the same basic hierarchy. Their positions don't matter. This goes way deeper than you might think, though, because your skeleton can even have things that aren't in other meshes. For example, if young Max here had a ponytail bone, then she'd still be the same skeleton as everybody else. There would just be a ponytail bone that isn't mapped to people that don't have a ponytail bone. In this way, you can add backpacks and skirts and whatever other things you need to add without ever having to change the nature of the skeleton. So everybody can have the same skeleton. If you're doing monsters, your monsters can all have the same skeleton as long as they have the same basic number of limbs. Even then, you can have more limbs and then just ignore them on the characters that have less. Once you understand what the skeleton is for and how it actually works, it becomes trivial to give everybody the same animation blueprint because they all have the same skeleton and they're all doing the same thing so they all get the same animation blueprint they're all different sizes all different shapes all using different animations but they all have the same animation blueprint this is really important i was struggling so hard to get my animation blueprints to work with different skeletons, and it never even occurred to me that I was misunderstanding the question in the first place. But, as I said before, if a class is making your life harder, you're using it wrong. And that's what I was doing. In this case, I had misunderstood one of the core foundational elements of Unreal. I didn't understand what a skeleton was, because it's different in Unreal than in everybody everywhere else on the planet. Once I understood it, the problem that was almost insurmountable became trivial. Now, if you're wondering how complicated this animation blueprint is, it's literally just play a montage if you're told to, and then do some eye tracking if you're told to. And this eye tracking stuff is just, basically I looked up a tutorial on how to do eye tracking, and this is just that same tutorial, but with some adjustments for my own personal preference. So I'm not gonna go into detail on how to do eye tracking unless I get a big demand for it. But this is a very basic animation blueprint, and it does the job just fine. Everybody has the same one. The other half of this, though, is telling the animation blueprint what to play. All of these characters have their own animations, and you'll notice that the animation blueprint didn't have any animations on it. So how do you tell them what to play? Well, you pass them a montage, which is just a giant stack of animations. Uh, if you wanted to see a montage, uh, da, 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 da. there, there's a montage. Mm, come on, give me a montage. There, this is a montage. See, it's just a bunch of animations. And then you've got some events that happen. 
I need to be able to pass this montage to the characters, have them play it from a specific section. Now previously, the way I did that was I did it through the level blueprint. And this is what that looks like. So here we see, on begin play, play a specific starting section of a specific montage. When you mouse over someone, play a specific section of a specific montage. When you mouse off of someone, play a specific section of a specific montage. And of course, there's some logic for being able to click on them and then say something. Now, this is not the best logic in the world. There's a few things wrong with it. But the big thing that's wrong with it is that it's annoying. Every time I create another character, I would have to cut and paste this entire block of nodes, and then I'd have to modify them. Modify this, modify this, modify this, modify this, modify all three of these, and that, and that. Every single character has to have a dozen nodes modified and like two dozen nodes copied and pasted. It's getting complicated. It's getting miserable. Clearly, I need to make my life easier. So all I have to do is create a class that does that work for me. In this case, the class I created was a descendant of the Skeletal Mesh Actor class. To show you how to do that, you just select a Skeletal Mesh Actor, like this character here. See? Skeletal Mesh Actor. This is the base class that you get when you drag a Skeletal Mesh into a scene. It's responsible for you know, giving the Skeletal Mesh a position in your scene, and giving it an animation blueprint, and that sort of stuff. It doesn't have any additional logic to it, but this would make sense as a place to put any sort of custom logic that this character would have. If I need this character to play specific animation montages when the mouse, mouse is over them, it would make sense to put those animation a reference to those animation montages in this character, which is exactly what I did. So if you come over here and you press this button, you get the option to create a new subclass. That's exactly what I did. I created a new subclass called Generic Character. The new subclass has all of the same capabilities as the old class. It's identical in every way, except I can add more logic to it. And this is fundamentally the most common way that a dev will be creating new classes. There are exceptions. Sometimes you'll be creating classes that don't descend from anything else. But for the most part, this is how you do it. You want all of that same stuff, but with your own little logic on top. And the logic I added was mostly to tell it what variables to use. So here you can see that down here, I tell them, what what's this person's name? Uh, Joyce? No, her name is Shaboth the Invincible. And uh, she says, poor girl. Uh, and here's the montage she should play. We'll make her play Kate's montage. Or, or just to be funny, we'll make her play the child's montage. Here's a section to play in this situation, that situation, that situation. Does she respond when you click on her? Does she fire off a chat event when you click on her? I just set those variables up and told them to play. That's all I needed to do. So exactly what does that class look like? Well, let's go ahead and bring this back around. Oh, I forgot to click on her so you could see Shogoth the Invincible. Shogoth the Invincible, there. So the class looks like this. Also, I added in this ball. This ball exists just to make mousing over them a little bit easier. Since they're in motion, it's quite possible for you to, say, mouse over someone's arm, and then their arm moves, and they start to play the mouse off animation, which brings their arm back under your mouse. So I just gave them a big ball around them so that you wouldn't have to worry about that. But in terms of the logic, what I did is I added in, oh, here it is, what I did is I added in all of the same logic I was already using here. So you see this? Play this montage on event begin. Play this montage on cursor over. Play this montage on cursor off. Well, here it is. Same stuff. I just put it somewhere where it would make my life easier and I wouldn't have to manually change a hundred different things. I also added in an additional on click option. If we're told to respond to a click with an animation, then do exactly that. And over here, I've got the same logic. This is the logic where I pop up the thing that says press A, and I get rid of it if you move away from it. And here's all the same logic. If you click on them, then 
get rid of anything that's popped up and uh, here's where you say your line of dialogue if you've been told to. Nothing about this particular setup is something universal. This is logic that I created for my specific needs in this specific arena, this specific game tutorial uh, garden. And I just was having a hard time with all of the cutting and pasting and all of the constant renaming of nodes and stuff like that, and I wanted to make it easier. So I found a way to make my life easier by creating a custom class to do what I specifically needed it to do today. This is how you think about custom classes, how I think about them anyway. I could do this with the blunt force approach. I can just set it up in the level and tell the level to do this stuff, you know, with whatever class happens to be there. But that didn't make sense after I had two or three of them. I needed a lot more. Uh, I needed more people, and they all needed to be doing the same things. It just, just didn't make sense to constantly tell the level to do that stuff over and over and over. Package it up, put it somewhere nice. Once you've done that, you can start to add features that you wanted to have but were kind of annoying. For example, this collider. I wanted to have a collider around all the characters, but if I was doing it in the level, I would have to manually create a collider for each character in the level, move it into place, and scale it properly. But since these characters all have the same class, you can see that they all have that same collider around them. Similarly, I wanted to allow the characters to do something that maybe you didn't know was possible, depending on exactly how much Unreal experience you have. You see, not every character just wants to say a line of dialogue. Lots of characters might want to punch you in the face, or let you buy a cigarette, or walk away, or whatever else they want to do, right? But if all of the characters are just responding with this pop-up here, the default pop-up that we added into their character class, then we can't do that. So how do we get the capability to allow the characters to do anything when you click on them? Well, that's where the switch comes in. Uh, oh, I accidentally opened up the thing there. Uh, there we are. Sorry about that. Here's this switch. Fire chat event. If you're not supposed to fire a chat event, then you just go say that line of dialogue that you want to say. If you are supposed to fire the chat event, you just fire off an event. An event is just down here. I created a new event dispatcher. I named it chat. I didn't customize anything. I literally just hit that plus button and typed chat. What does this allow us to do? Well, it allows us to catch that event and do whatever we need to do with it. For example, back here in the level tutorial, in the level, in the level blueprint, here is Chloe. When Chloe chats, pop up a text widget, wait, delete it, pop up a different text widget, wait, delete it, pop up a different text widget, wait, delete it. I can allow Chloe to do whatever I want when I click on her by just outsourcing that. It's really important to understand where these lines get drawn. If I was going to try and put all of the logic for every possible response into those classes, it would be a nightmare. I'd have to come up with some kind of like scripting language or something. It would be really brutal. I'd have to create a hundred different subclasses, all of which field out various operations to other classes. It would just be, ugh, ugh, because these characters can do anything. I could have a building explode if I talk to them. I can do anything I want with these characters, or I should be. And making all of that logic somehow get contained within that class would be brutal. It would make my life very, very hard. Which, as you know, means that I'm either using the wrong class or using the class wrong. In this case, that kind of one-off level interaction makes more sense to put in the level. That's what the level blueprint is for. So, that's where I put it. All I had to do was put in a little event that would allow this object to register that had been clicked on in the level. So it fires off an event and the level is sitting there waiting for the event.
pretty basic. Now, I'm not going to tell you that this is some kind of magic solution. I'm just trying to tell you that when you're thinking about your own stuff, you need to think about how classes can make your life easier. If they're not making your life easier, then you're doing it wrong. You need to make your life as easy as possible because game dev is miserably difficult. And if you're making it harder than it needs to be, you're never going to get anywhere. So if you're having a really difficult time and you're trying to do something and it's turning into a complicated slog, chances are you're using the wrong class or you're using the class wrong. Now, obviously there are exceptions, but at our level using this kind of simple stuff, you should be able to find a class that does what you need or figure out a way to make a very simple custom class that does what you need. If things are getting complicated, back off. Think about it a while. Maybe ask someone what you should be doing, what classes are supposed to be used in this way. Anyway, that's my advice. Hope it helps.